Awo Shalom Rastafari. This is Wendem Yadon Ras Yadinos Tafari Neng. And we say uh, Melkam Lidet, Lidet Yesus, as well as Melkam Genna. Now, this is our 2012 update of the Sabbath House readings and the feedings for the weekly sabbatical portion. And we're up to a sabbatical portion 12 now on the eve, this sabbatical Shabbat Eve of um, the Ethiopian, um, what's known as the Ethiopian Christmas or Lidet. It's also known as Genna. Now, it's very interesting, this name, Genna, that, is, that the Ethiopian Christmas is called as well. And we were reminded of this by one of our Rastafari sisters, um, a sister in the faith, uh, Sister Deborah, Sister Deborah. She just had uh, text us uh, Melkam Genna recently. We don't know if you saw the video that we, that we posted up there or not. But we give thanks for that, and this brought to light another element, another aspect of the story, of our story, of our divine heritage. Now, once again, let's bring up some of the visual, the visual um, uh, presentation right here, and this is the cover of uh, Bereshit, Bereshit, or Bereshit, or Barasit, which is the Hebrew word for uh, Genesis. And it's this document here that we have available. And it's this particular book, which is um, the first Torah portion, or it consists of the first uh, Torah portion readings and feedings. Let's bring this um, to a more representative size here so you can see the fullness of the cover. And this is available at the www lojsociety.org for a donation and this particular book is the first part of our Torah portion readings and feeding so let's go back to the to the chart over here our Sabbath house our Sabbath house uh, Torah readings for 2011 leading into 2012 where we're at right now now the particular portion that is to be read this Sabbath this 12th Sabbath in our yearly cycle of Torah portion readings and feedings, we're, we're enlarging this right here so you can get a clear view of it. it. It's what's known as, let's get the pointer, as te ke me te te ke me te te ke me te te ke me te and it consists in Genesis 47, verse 28, the Torah portion, the foundational studies, is Genesis 47, chapter 47, verses 28, to Genesis chapter 50, verse 26. Now, you can download this particular chart for free at our website, and it's under the weekly Torah portions, as well as our Hebraic Judaic year. This will uh, keep you in tune with the... The, the lunar calculation or the heavenly calculations for the major Hebraic or Jewish holy days, which are our holy days as Ethiopian Hebrews. Now, the, the real prophetic aspect of this is how this connects to true Christina or true Christianity or what we might call Ethiopic the Ethiopic Church and Ethiopic Christianity from its very roots. And we're going to the very root and the foundation because over time, other, other um, teachings have crept in to the Ethiopic Church. And His Imperial Majesty, Kedemawi Haile Selassie, even from the days of his um, al Rashinet Gizeh, um, from such a time when he became a Ras and plenty potentiary, to the Davidic and Solomonic throne that he sought to weed out these, these errors that had been introduced. And his main resource for weeding out these errors were the scriptures. He utilized the scriptures and the Ethiopic documents. As we've mentioned before, no doubt you recall, we have mentioned that his imperial majesty, Kedemawi Haile Selassie, was the first to bring into Ethiopia 
what we know of as the modern um, printing press. And let's bring up this representation right here, just what's available to us at the present moment within the um, time that we have in, in this presentation right here. And let's just do this right here. Just bear with us for a moment. We want to, this is um, Antichrist opposing Christ. In other words, Mussolini, fascist Italy, which is a, a whole prophecy was a whole prophecy was revealed in that time there's a whole prophecy a prophetic area of revelation that was revealed in the acts of fascist italy against blameless ethiopia so it was his imperial majesty katamawi hana Selassie, who sought to make those those major and significant reforms in the the church the ethiopian church um, much like and in the testimony of Jesus Christos, in the testimony of Jesus Christ, as Christ um, disputed with the Pharisees and Sadducees and the other church authorities, so did his imperial majesty with those um, um, individuals in the Ethiopian church who knowingly or unknowingly had brought in and introduced corruption into the 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 true Tawahido, the the the, the true indigenous Ritit Hymenot, what we would call orthodoxy, but the word orthodox, holding to that word, is secondary to holding to the word Tawahido, the word Tawahido. Now we also want to mention um, the Ethiopian um, uh, Ethiopia, the kingdom of God the kingdom of God. You can look that up, Google that, and Nebura Id, Nebura Id um, Eremias, or Jeremiah, because this particular prophecy right now actually connects with um, Jeremiah. And the particular season and time that we are living in, I mean, this particular season where this is the eve of the Ethiopian um, uh, Christmas or birth of Christ, even for the birth of Jesus, it really was the birth of Jesus. And as you see right here, this is uh, a, a portion from um, Wudase Mariam, the Wudase Mariam, Wudase Mariam, which is the praises of Kedistin Mariam. And this is one of the, the older, more indigenous. Um, um, art and facts, or some will say icons, of the Virgin Mother and Child, which is appropriate for this particular season and is part of the reason for the season. But now what has become very um, re revelatory to us in this present time, right now, though we were familiar with other aspects of it, what we wanted to share as we still seek to um, compile this and bring it together and try to present it to our brothers and sisters so they can go check it out and find the truth for themselves, begins actually for us with this particular Torah portion, um, reading and feeding. So let's first begin off with the Sabbath house, reading and feeding, and we're in the 12th, as page 4, 12. This is the 12th Sabbath in this particular cycle for um, 2012, and today's date, this is the eve of the Shabbat, or what they would call in the West, um, Friday evening, um, January 6th, this is the 6th of January, 2012, and it's the eve of the Ethiopian Lidet, or the birth of Yehoshua, the birth of Yeshua, the birth of Jesus, Zenaz Aretu, the branch, who is also known as the Moshiach, the Moshi Jesus, or Jesus Christos, according to the interpretation, according to the interpretation. We've touched on that in First John chapter, or John actually, John's Gospel. Not the epistle, but the gospel, John chapter 1, verse 41, where it shows us that they had found the Mashiach, or the Moshiach, and that was interpreted in the popular language that the majority of the people, many who were unlettered, unlearned with the scriptures, just like many of us, 
and many of our people, even the Rastafari and many of the Ethiopians in exile, especially the youths, are unlettered and unlearned as they should with their own language, with the royal and the pure Amharic language of the Metzaf Kedus, as well as the Gutiz, the Gutiz language, which is part of our, our roots. So let's go to the scriptures right here, and let's begin this portion. Now this portion begins in chapter 40, 47, verse 28. Now, here we have a program that we found recently, and we'd like to upload this, and um, since it's free, free shareware, it's called uh, The Word, The Word Programming. And for those brothers and sisters who want to study and utilize the studies on their mobile or other electronic digital um, device, their computer, or whatever the technology, this is a good program that can be used interactive software to study the scriptures a little bit deeper than just the King James. This is one reason why we recommend the Schofield Reference Bible, which is also available for free download at www.lojsociety.org. R G. Now, let us get into this portion of scripture right here, and we'll find that the verse begins, from the King James Version for this particular Sabbath, which is the eve of the Ethiopian Christmas, or Lidet, or the birth of the Moshiach, the birth of the Messiah, the Christ, known as Yes. Another important point is that this is known in the oldest of our um, traditions, true apostolic church traditions. This day is actually known as Emmanuel. But now, like we said from the very beginning, there's a mystery. There's a there's a Genna mystery. There's a Genna mystery, and the, and we're gonna touch on that. Yah willing in this particular teaching right here. So let's just begin off with the King James Version right here. And it says, And Jacob and Yaakob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. So the whole age of Yaakob or Jacob was 140 and 7 years. Now this is another translation um, here that we have as a sample, Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. The years of Yaakov's life were 147 in all. Now, here's the Hebrew, and here's how we make this connection now. Just pay attention to this, how we make this connection. Let's um, click on um, this right here is um, the Vayichi, or the Vayichi, Ya'ekob, Wa'yehi Ya'ekob, Wa'yehi Ya'ekob. In other words, this is the part that helps constitute the particular key word in the Hebrew. Right here, let's see if we can highlight that. This is the Hebrew part right here. This is the traditional Hebrew way of looking at it. Vayyehi, or some would say Vayyachi, that's improper pronunciation for the Hebrew, Wa'yehi. Wa'yichi, and we say the more correct pronunciation we have here, where it's Wa'yichi, Wa'yichi. So let's get into the name, the particular portion. That would mean, and he lived, and he lived, referring to Ya'ekob. Now, in the royal, pure language, the pure scripture revealed by the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the Met of Caduce of his imperial majesty, we have Tekemet. We have it as Tekemet. And any um, Ethiopian who understands this, or Ethiopic speaker, or Amharic speaker, would know that means, and he sat, to, to infer, and he dwelt, and he dwelt here or there. Now, this is all in reference to, to Jacob. Now, why is this very important in reference to Jacob? Let's see if we still have this um, open and available. Um, an image, perhaps we can bring up an image, at least a standing image of Jacob. And I think we have an Abraham file um, either on the hard drive here. Um, and we utilize the Dr. York or the Nuwabian images were very, very appropriate um, 
imagery, at least to help black people and our people begin to reconstruct in their mind's eye a more indigenous and a more a more um, racially relevant, you understand, imagery of the people of the Bible. And as we've also proven elsewhere, we can prove what we're saying about their racial identity, their Ethiopianist, which is to say their blackness. So we're seeking to bring up a picture of Jacob right here for you. Um, please be patient. And if we have to continue this, um, continue this uh, elsewhere, we will continue this in another, if we can, if we run out of uh, time in this recording. Okay, here's a picture of Jacob. Here's a picture. We say this is a stand-in picture of, of Jacob right here of Yaakov. So let's bring that picture of Yaakov, of Jacob. So this portion is referring to Jacob who lived in Egypt for 17 years. Now, what is important? What is the connection of the Torah portion, the particular Torah portion or Old Testament or in the New Testament when Christ says, haven't you read? Haven't you read in the Scriptures? Haven't you read in the scriptures? The scriptures in the time of Yehoshua. What were the scriptures in the time of Yehoshua? The scriptures in the time of Yehoshua or Yesus was the Old Testament. The Old Testament were the scriptures. So when you're reading the New Testament and Christ is talking about haven't you read in the scriptures, it's important for us to note and recognize that he's speaking of the Old Testament the five books of Moses, the Psalms of David, as well as connecting with that, connective to that, the prophets and other writings that we know collectively as the Old Testament. And that's a basic foundation for any mature Christian, any true Christian, not to so-called become a Jew in that sense, but to be familiar with the context of Scripture, the background of Scripture. So this portion is concerning Jacob, whom we have a Nuwabian Islamic Hebrews, our brothers and sisters of that branch. And when we look in Ethiopia, we see Sudan, and we see Ethiopia. So we see the lineage of Jacob in that sense, part of that, the, the monarchy, you understand, represented in and by his imperial majesty in this present time of prophecy and revelation. Now, the key of the word tekemete, the key of the word tekemete, right, and this is touching on the mystery of Genna, the key of tekemete, you understand, is and he sat, but literally, and he reigned. And this is the portion, this is the Amharic portion, this verse, where it says, Ya'ik obema begit midr asara sebata amet tek emet ye ya'ik obema mulao ye hiwatu zemin meto arba sebat amet no. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. So the whole or the entire Mulao, Mulao, the entirety of Yehiwatu, this is part of that same Yehi, the root when we get into the Ge'ez, part of that same root, Zemin. We touch on the word Zemin elsewhere as well. We refer to the word Zemin, that's an age. His age was 140 meto arba sebat, seven amet year nawu. It is, it is, and to say it is, it doesn't even say it was in that sense, but it is, because it's giving actually this story and this, this testimony in the different tenses of past, present reality, and future, present reality as well, prophetically. So the word tekemet, the secret of tekemet, means that he ruled, he reigned. That's part of the secret, part of the, the, the Jacob mystery to the Torah portion. That, it, that why the Amharic says tekemet, even though the good is, let's bring this up right here. We have a couple of different aspects to this that we would like to touch on. Um, and 
this will be the basic Torah portion, reading and feeding and how it relates with um, this particular sabbatical, the 12th sabbatical. So we call this the RSS, Rastafari Sabbath um, Scrolls or Sabbath Studies. It's the 12th for 2012. And I and I, Rasia Dinos, otherwise known to the Brotherhood as Wendem Yadin, this is our selective Torah portion notes and commentaries to the Sabbath number 12, the reading which comprises and constitutes Genesis 47 verses 28 to Genesis 50 verse 26, and um, confer or compared with the Ethiopic Libet. In other words, seeing that these things align in this particular season, there's an important sign in this that also helps us to understand the story of Christ's birth in its proper sequence in the year, that this was a particular season that Christ, the Annunciation, took place. And we just want to refer this to the record, brothers and sisters, take a note of this, the, the Jonah Code. The Jonah Code should be a good reference for this in order to look at Michael Rood. Um, uh, this uh, Jewish brother, his name is Michael Rood, and he approaches it from a, like a messianic Jewish or Hebrew perspective. So he embraces the Moshiach as Jehoshua. Perhaps on a racial level, perhaps there's some disagreement. We don't know directly, but as far as his study, honest study of the scripture, and showing the Hebraic context of the New Testament and how it got perverted in its Western Gentile misunderstanding. Michael Rood's program, the Jonah Code, for this particular season, Jonah Code, um, the eighth program, there's 12 half an hour programs. The eighth program is very, very important. And we have some stills from that as well as some videos that we'll like to compile and put together. But if you watch the whole series, you'll know more of what we are seeking to refer to, that Christ was not born on December 23rd. And even from the Ethiopian, the Orthodox tradition, he was not born on January 7th. But that was an Annunciation, and this is one of the reasons why um, and Brother Nibor Eid Arimias, he brought this to all of I and I attention in the calendar. Let's see if we can bring up the calendar, the Ethiopic calendar. There's the Ethiopian calendar for this, uh, for this year, for this season right here. And this is a copy of the Ethiopic calendar, and it's in the Ethiopic ciphers. This is Haya Hulet. 22, Haya Sos, Haya Arad, Haya Amis, Haya Sadis, Haya Sabat. And here, here's where we're at right now. Haya Sabat, or 27, and you can see it's the 6, the, the number 6, because this is for January, this is Friday, this will be Sunday, and this is the Sabbath. And the red letter is for, this is the 28th, or Haya Cement. What's normally observed among most uh, Ethiopian Christians who might not really know the real roots, what's popularly observed in the present, quote, orthodoxy, end quote, is that this is when Christ was born. But from the ancient Ethiopic church, it is known that this is when, it, when Christ was announced, when the angel Gabriel, or Lika Melaik, announced to this Dengamarium, the birth of the Bain Ha Elohim, or the birth of the Son of God, the Son of the Elohim, the true God, known as Yehoshua. This is what this particular day is. So when we mention there was a Genna mystery to this, some of us might refer to it as Melkam Genna. Some might refer to it as uh, Melkam Lidet. And because we're coming from a Western perspective ourselves and some of the Western Gentile misunderstanding, and many of us have not really grasped the keys of the language and to the ability to study these materials fully for ourselves, those of us who have been able to go forward and, in a sense, go up a little bit ahead of ones to help to guide our brothers and sisters in this particular truth are able to now put together those those. Um, um, pieces of the puzzle, as it were, 
and to show exactly what the true reason for the season really is. So as we go into the Torah portion reading and feeding, we'll find out something very, very interesting. And I know that we're, we're about to close out this particular segment, and hopefully we'll get a chance to follow up have a follow-up segment right after this that will continue where we haven't been able to get to in this particular portion. But let's see if we can bring this up right here. Um, this is uh, the Bereshit, uh, the Hebrew book of Genesis, the Torah portion, um, volume 1. And this particular reading and feeding is the last in this particular Torah portion, volume 1. And that's the book cover that we had um, referenced um, that we had referenced um, elsewhere. Let's see if we can bring this up to a, a, a good a good size, front and center. Um, so that's Vayahi right there. Vayahi, Vayahi. Now, this particular, of course, is from the the free uh, Wikipedia, the free online encyclopedia. And as we said earlier and we said before and we'll say again we took a uh, Christian liberty and Hebraic liberty to compile this into this version right here um um bereshit bereshit uh, bereshit um the Hebrew book of Genesis Torah portion volume 1 so it's a companion to our Torah portion reading and feedings, which goes into some more details from a so-called Jewish perspective. And what we're seeking to do is now compare that with our Ethiopic roots and affirm what we know is true and point out the differences, what we might think are errors or just differences of opinion from the conventional uh, Jewish, um, European Jewish understanding of these facts. So when we get into Wayahi, part of what connects this with the Genna mystery, and we're going to probably have to pick up on this in part two because we're going to get into the word Genna. But once again, Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam, as well as Melkam Lidet, Adarasachu, and Melkam Genna. Stay tuned because we want to touch on this uh, Genna mystery. What is the Genna mystery? What's the half of the story concerning the Genna mystery? What does Genna mean? So please, brothers and sisters, stay tuned for that in the next part of this special Ethiopian Birth of Yeshua uh, series from the line of Judah Society. Shalom Aras Teferi.